Today we're gonna learn how to remove anything by tricking the content aware fill. Now what is the content aware fill? Well, it's the automatic brother of the clone stamp tool. Now what does the clone stamp tool do? It allows you to fill or remove, replace certain areas by sampling some other areas. And of course the sampling is manual. You manually determine what to sample and using that sample, you replace or fill certain areas. Well, the content aware fill is automatic. You just select the area that you want to replace or fill and then just play it and it does everything automatically. And anytime there is something automatic in Photoshop, it tends to sample from the wrong areas. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to make Photoshop sample from the areas that you desire. Isn't that interesting? It's, it's very interesting. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and if you want to download this photo, make sure to go ahead and check the links in the description. So first off, make a copy of the background layer. Why? Because content aware fill is destructive. So to be super safe, we need to make a copy. To make a copy, control or command J. Done. Now, suppose you want to remove this chimney and this is distracting you. So what to do? Select any selection tool. I'll select the rectangular marquee tool and make a selection around it and simple. Press shift delete. If you're using a Mac, if you're using Windows, it would be shift backspace. Okay. So shift backspace or shift delete. This opens up the fill dialog box and you can choose content aware and click OK. Or what you can do, you can go to edit fill brings up the same dialog box choose content aware and make sure color adaptation is checked mode normal 100% click OK this should do a pretty good job because this is an easy fix wow it did a wonderful job if you zoom out you cannot tell now let's try on some other things let's try on these names okay so suppose you want to remove this so sorry to the author shift backspace shift delete if you're using a Mac and then click OK Let's see what kind of a job it does. It did brilliantly. Let's try it on this one and let's shift backspace and then click OK. Let's see. Wonderful job. Now let's try on this one. I'm very doubtful about this. Shift backspace, content aware, click OK. Let's see. Now, as you can see, this did a pretty good job, but at the same time, it is sampling from the wood here. We don't want that because it's similar color, it's sampling from here. We don't want that to happen. So how to make Photoshop sample from just these areas, okay, these areas? It's very simple. Here's what you need to do. Just make a mask of just these area, okay? What if in the current layer, and listen to this carefully, what if in the current layer there is nothing to sample from except the cover of this particular book? Wouldn't that be interesting? So here's what you need to do. To remove this special case, make another copy of it. Press Ctrl or Command J. Okay? Now, in this layer, you just wanted to sample from this particular area. What if we had nothing else, right? That would force Photoshop to sample from just those areas. So simply create a mask, okay? So we want Photoshop to sample from just this area. So we would select that area and create a mask by clicking on this button. Now let's try it. Now let's come back to the layer. See, mask is selected. That doesn't need to happen. Come back to the layer and then do the same thing. Shift backspace, content aware, click OK. Now it will sample from nowhere else but just that area. You know why? Because that layer just has those areas. If we make this layer solo, this just has this area. It has nowhere else to sample from. So that's the trick. Now you can also try removing big stuff like let's come to this layer and let's try removing this mug. Let's see if that can do it. Shift backspace, click OK. Let's see. And obviously we need to make some changes, some fixes here and there for this particular big removal. Okay, it did a pretty good job. You can go with it, but the edges and the corners are, are something that you need to fix. And you can fix this very easily by using the clone stem tool, right? So simple, just sample this area and just paint, just line it up, 
and paint or probably if this is not straight what I would do I would select the rectangular marquee tool make a selection of this bring it on its own layer controller command J and then move it to this particular area and then rotate it a little bit move it a little up and then soften the edges with the eraser or mask it out select the mask take the brush foreground color black and you know the whole story of how to do it okay and then you can go ahead and adjust it so that it fits bring it down and use the let's go back to this layer and select the clone stamp tool and this is an easy fix just line it up a bit and there you go that's solved and that's how you solve these problems now let me show you one other thing which is not a part of this tutorial but will be very important to you okay so slowly and gradually you can go and remove this this is simple now why did I remove the book name place let's bring back the mug because we love the mug we didn't want the mug to go back okay let's bring back the mug now let's try to be authors of these fat books wouldn't that be genius okay so let's zoom in quite a bit and let's select the text too okay and then just write your name I would write my name that looks good I would select the move tool and then press controller command T and make it bigger by holding the shift to maintain the proportions okay that is good that looks intelligent now let's bring the text layer above every other layer and now let's adjust it the way we like now we might have to apply a lot of effects to it to make it look realistic right if we have a closer look let's zoom in see the book has a curvature we need to apply that curvature to this we need to apply some blend diff to blend in with the books page so to apply all those effects let's first convert this into a smart object to do that right click on it and click on convert to smart object and here's the biggest misconception you might think that once we have converted this into a smart object we might not be able to change the text but here's the thing we can and that's the best thing about smart object let me show you so first of all let's apply some effects so we would right click on it and go to blending options and apply some blending effects so take the slider of the underlying layer from right to left what we are actually doing is that we are removing the bright areas of the underlying layer from the current layer the layer which we have selected okay so as you can see the bright areas of the layer which is beneath it is being deleted from the current layer so this is too much let's make it smoother by holding the alter option clicking on it and then dragging it a little apart now that looks a little realistic once you're satisfied click OK now as you can see this has a curvature we need to give this a little bump how to do that and here comes the magic all you need to do just double click on the smart object and this opens up another dialog box where you can go ahead change the text apply some effects do whatever you want and then save it and that will update there in the main document so for example we would go to filter distort and maybe shear okay this is this is saying convert to smart object to asterisk cancel again convert to smart object no problem okay then we need to give it some curvature just like this not too much just a little bit of it and make sure repeat edge pixels is checked click OK now if wraparound was checked here's what would happen okay let's go back let's learn it today okay so filter let's select this layer then filter distort and then shear okay convert to smart object in case you check wrap around and click OK see the edge there's a little bump where is the bump coming from well see this is going out and this is getting out from here and inserting from the back okay we don't want that and that's why we have to select what just double click on the shear we have to select repeat edge pixels click OK now as you can see the right side is fine that looks fine but the left side it, it's kind of coming out so let's press C to open up the crop tool and let's just clear the crop because that kind of it's little less and then select the ratio the front image okay this selects the original ratio and then let's increase it a bit okay that looks good and once you're done just hit enter or return okay done that looks nice and save it file save done let's close this and as you can see this will update this has developed 
that curvature, right? Isn't that interesting? Now, this opens up the crop tool because that was already selected. Let's select the move tool. We don't want to crop it. Wow. Now, what if you want to change the text? Simple, just let's double click on it again. Now, this is also a smart object. So we have to double click on it again. And then you can change the text to whatever you like. Maybe you can just, let's type my brand name. Fun. Let's save it. File, save, done. Let's close it down. File, save, done. Let's close it. Replaced. We definitely will cover more magic the Smart Objects has to offer in future videos. I know we got a little sidetracked, but that's how you can use the Content Aware Fill to fill, remove, or replace certain areas automatically. All you have to do, just select that area and apply Content Aware Fill. And if it's sampling from the wrong area, then mask out the areas that you don't want it to sample from. Pretty easy, right? Hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss a thing. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.